videos. Until now, we have covered general ledger, accounts payable, and all the basics of finance and accounting. We have also covered in SAP FICO the demo of accounts payable, wherein we've covered how a vendor master and the vendor transactions look like. We will now take the next topic, which is accounts receivable. In this training, what we will look at specifically will be the objects and relationships in accounts receivable. We will cover the customer master data, document types, revenue posting, interest for late payments, employee loans and advances, incoming payments, document reversals, and special GL transactions. We will finally also cover accounts receivable reports and we look into the demo of most of the items which are listed on the screen. Accounts receivable. This is the basic billing to cash cycle for accounts receivable. So from SAP SD, which is sales and distribution module, there will be invoices which are posted for customers in the system. These invoices get converted into financial documents, which is called SAP FIAR, Accounts Receivable. Once these documents are verified, it's called invoice verification. They are then processed, which is called invoice processing. These invoices are also called billing documents because they are for customers. And the last step is for cash management team, which is the invoice payment. The customer invoice payments are done either manually or automatically in the system. Let us look at this cycle in more detail in the coming slides. First, let's look at the roles and responsibilities. Similar to what we saw for accounts payable, Accounts receivable also has different kind of roles and responsibilities within a company. You will always find that someone who posts a particular invoice is different than someone who makes the payments or someone who parks will be someone who is junior and someone who will finally approve and post the document will be someone who is senior in an accounting team. These are the different kind of roles which need to be adjusted within SAP. We have an accounts receivable accountant, which is also an analyst in accounts receivable team, who has the authority to park the invoice documents and to display different details. Whereas a data administrator role will have more authority in terms of maintaining, deleting customer master data. A supervisor will be an even more senior role who has the authority to post any outgoing invoice document as well as post any incoming payments from the customer. They are also responsible to display the reports in the system on a monthly basis. We can also have the treasury team who have the authority to park any parameters or proposals for automatic payments and they can also display the bank master data. These are basically cashiers in the organization terminology. We can also have AR accountant corporate or data administrator corporate and these are basically the corporate accounting team who have even further authorization to different transactions. Similar to the vendor master data, customer master data also has three parts. General data, company code data, and sales area data. General data will cover all the information which is independent of the company code. For example, it will cover the customer's name, address, language, any other communication related details, and 
the VAT number. It will also cover the customer's bank data. After that, the customer may be created in different company codes. Hence, there is a company code data tab. Within this, you will find information like payment transactions, correspondence, etc. This is mainly details like what is the reconciliation account or what is the different kind of payment methods which the customer will be making a payment from. And finally, you noticed that we had a purchasing organization data for vendors. Over here, similarly, we have sales organization data. Which means, if you have multiple sales areas within your company code, you can further bifurcate the data over here for a customer master. This is how a general data first screen looks like. It's very similar to vendors and you will see that it says uh, the name of the customer and the address of the customer etc on the screen. Within the general view we also have a vendor number. This is mainly for clearing purposes. So if there is a clearing required between a customer and a vendor, a customer number must be entered in the vendor master and similarly a vendor number needs to be entered in the customer master. We also have the bank details like the country, bank key, bank account number, IBAN number which need to be entered over here. This is good to know because we will know that from which account the customer is making a payment, especially if there is an online transfer. The next tab is the company code view. As you see in the company code view, the company always comes up over here. This is specific to this company code where you have the reconciliation account and the cash management group, etc. You can also have a, any previous account number of the customer from any previous legacy system over here. The next tab is the payment transactions which is very important for accounting. In this tab you have things like the terms of payment which is an agreed payment term between you and the customer. You also have the payment method which means what are the different kind of methods by which the customer may make payment. It can be an incoming check, it can be a bank transfer, it can be a SEPA transfer, etc. Also, if there are any payment blocks, then those need to be assigned over here. If a company has any withholding tax relevance, then those details also need to be assigned here. We have already covered what a reconciliation account means in the vendor related accounts payable slides. Similarly, a customer also has a reconciliation account. Basically, all the customers are grouped into different kind of categories. For example, third-party customers or intercompany customers or non-trade customers or one-time customers and these are once they are grouped into different account groups they have their respective reconciliation accounts. Reconciliation accounts are basically GL accounts which are a compilation of various customers within one GL. So you can have hundred different customers 100 different third party customers but they will all be combined into one reconciliation GL account for accounting purposes. This is an example to show you how a number range can be defined for different account groups for customers. We also have different document types. For example, you will have a document type to make a 
payment to the customer, you will have a document type separately for posting a customer invoice into accounting. You will also have different document types for those invoices which are posted directly from the sales and distribution module. This is just an example list and there can be more customer document types in the system. You can also create a new document type if the organization wants that. There are specific posting keys for customers, especially the ones which we use are 01, which is to debit a customer, and 19, which is to credit a customer, or 11, which is to credit a customer for credit memos. Payments also have their respective posting keys. And posting keys determine whether an item is a debit or a credit and what kind of account type is being used. So as you must have seen in the previous video, we do not need to anywhere enter debit or credit in the system manually. It is the posting key which automatically derives whether an amount is a debit or a credit. Special GL indicators are mainly used for any advance payments which are made by the customer. For example, in this case, once an invoice is posted for a customer, you can have a reconciliation account for cash call which gets automatically posted too. A special GL indicator is something that you already add during the special GL posting. This is just an example to show you the special GL indicators which can be used in the system. Payment methods. A payment method is used to receive any kind of payment from a customer. For example, you can have incoming bank transfers. You can have incoming checks. You can also have incoming SEPA transfers. You can have multiple payment methods for one customer and you can assign these in the customer master under the company code data. Payment terms are different kind of terms which are agreed with a customer. For example, you can agree with one customer that they should always make a payment immediately once a sale is completed. Whereas with some long term customers who you have good relationships with, you can have different payment terms like 30 days or 45 days. You can also provide a cash discount to customers if they make a payment within a specific period of days, for example, 15 days or 20 days. These payment terms are assigned in the customer master directly. We also have output taxes similar to input taxes for vendors. Output taxes are basically taxes which are calculated on the sales and these are assigned along with tax codes. Tax codes are an easy way in SAP to track what percentage of tax has been charged on a particular transaction. We also have the foreign currency valuation report where the authorized personnel can review and see what are the different foreign currency differences which have been posted to. For example, if your business is based out of US but you have customers who are based out of Europe, Australia or India, then this will help you a lot to judge what are the different foreign currency valuations and whether you have gained or lost on a particular transaction. We will now stop the video over here and we will cover the basic concepts and the transactions in accounts receivable in the next video. Thank you very much for watching Edupedia World videos.